It is 5.10 p.m. Dubai. Today is 4th of December. It should be 6.40 p.m. in India. And we shall start our, our second session uh, for today. It's 82B. And our topic of discussion today is you create your reality. So to discuss about that, first let us go into that. What is reality? Here we are, uh, there at one reality, which is this, you know, universal truth. Means this is this is the ultimate reality. <clears throat> what we can one can experience when all other instrument of interpretation stops, no interpretation, direct experience of direct downloaded experience, and that that is the ultimate reality. That is that is the truth. <clears throat> And uh, unanalyzed, unfiltered, and uh, contaminated as pure form. So that is that is the one is uh, ultimate truth that is comes and the part of the self realization. This part of the self realization that you know truth comes. Why it is ultimate? Because it is not with respect to anything. It is as it is. It is not about somebody else's version, somebody else's things. When this is somebody else describe it, it loses its authenticity. That become a version. Okay. Let me give uh, one example I normally give. A flower is bloomed and it is giving fragrances. Okay. So it, it is it is just a fact. It is. Now somebody come and saying how beautiful the flower is. The flower is, uh, you know, it's a, a small plant, but a bigger flower. You know. The flower is, uh, you know, it's uh, such and such color, such and such thing describing it. And so it is in the middle of the forest and giving this. All these are attributes, which is explanation of somebody. It's not the truth itself. Truth it itself can be experienced that the flower, the fragrance is coming. It is experienced and matter ends there. There is no further thing on that. That is the truth. And rest of somebody is explaining how beautiful it is or how you know wonderful the fragrance is and all these kind of things. These becomes the interpretation of that the observer. So in this matter, what happens is so this somebody else get involved so that the truth is become distorted. Like it is no longer the same. You know, it is somebody's version. Somebody may not like it. It is, it's a, the flower, but there is a, you know, one particular leaf is not a uh, little dried up or the fragrance is not like before or something of that nature. So that becomes a uh, some kind of version or comparison. So that the description of the flower, it become interpretation of somebody. Those are all indirect way of, way of experiencing things. So ultimate truth cannot ultimate truth cannot be realized if this kind of interpreter is there. I'm trying to get there. It is difficult to explain, but I'm trying to get there how it how it works. So suppose there is a moon in the sky. It is as it is. Now I say, okay, okay, moon should be in the middle of the sky. It is. It should not be there or there is some cloud in front of the moon and moon is not full 
full yet. It is it is going towards full moon. It is not a full moon yet. These are all versions. Moon is there as a celestial object, and it it is there as it is. But now we are interpreting it, or maybe we are giving it what phase of moon it is, what is doing. It is uh, it is there is uh, it looks little reddish, and all these these are the versions and interpretations. Okay. Now. to experience the the ultimate reality we need to get rid of this kind of interpreter in other words we need to get rid of the experiencer because this experiencer the entity who is experiencing this is contamin this itself is contaminating the truth that's why you cannot experience the truth as it is because of the presence of this experiencer and it is well understood in the spiritual uh, domain so in the final state there is some process called trio dissolution or the trikuti what is the trio trio is the object and the ex- experiencer and the process of experiencing or witness you can say object witnesser and the process of witnessing these three things called trikuti these three things are involved into this but what happens is, is that in our this experiencer is mostly our our ego our you know entity what clamors me you know somebody i am experiencing hmm. that me has to go then in that process what happens is finally at one level of time when the interpreter drops drops the witnesser drops the process of witnessing also drops because there is no process involved here it is as it is whether Uh, just let me try to go anywhere near by that whether somebody is witnessing or not watching or not appreciating or not moon is there whether somebody is experiencing the the fragrance or not somebody is gone to that area to see the flower or not flower is there it it is expressing itself it is not depending at somebody's clap or thing oh wonderful it doesn't depend it has got its own own attribute swadharma it is expressing its swadharma and that's it nothing beyond that whether somebody is appreciating rejecting criticizing that doesn't matter it is just be there as it is at the same time it is also in the it is exist in the nature it is neither complaining nor appreciating about anything else in the nature it is it is a pure state that state is we call pure state of being there is no analysis no interpretation so humanly we go there we experience by stopping our ego mind by holding our ego mind we reach there where we can experience something as it is no interpretation and that is called the direct experience direct first hand experience all we talk about going into the higher dimensional experiences are direct experiences not the interpretations the moment you verbalize it you share shared it or something that originality is gone it is now become your version so from this understanding the ultimate truth has to be reached where there is no experiencer no witnesser that is the ultimate truth so what happens if the experiencer witnesser is there okay this is called there is some kind of ultimate reality and that is kind of experienced reality but the experiencer is experiencing or witnessing their version so if we take that thing out it remains with what how the experiencer is experiencing 
because for the experiencer that is the reality if the flower is not fully bloomed or one petal is falling off and the observer is observing it that is the reality for the observer some of other observer just getting the fragrance of that and appreciating to that person that flower is giving the fragrance it doesn't matter about the petal somebody is saying oh this flower has got thrown out the kata like i say rose so that from that person's perspective it is the flower with a thorn you know flower with the kata kata become more important than the other thing aspects of the flower or some comparison yes this is a good flower but it is not the biggest i have ever seen or it is a smaller category i have seen much much bigger than that so this interpretation comes from the person who is observing so ultimate reality is same but the interpretations are different <clears throat> interpretations different because or because of our inner state the observer's inner state that observer inner state can vary due to multiple reasons his past memory about it his thinking pattern is conditioning or some uh, people may say oh, don't go nearby uh, you know some bee will come and bite you some honey bee will come and bite you because maybe some part of his life his experience some when in the you know flowery when some bee has come and you know stuck uh, stuck him so that revokes that memory so flower is not a very good experience for him you know you should it, it is to be avoided to be you know looked into far away so this kind of stuff so that means the even the ultimate reality is same but it becomes different because of the different people because of their own inner configuration how you reflect yourself how you reflect the reality on you or if you take another example of say the each and individual persons are a mirror even though object remains the same but the image that created by the mirror will be different for the different mirror because of the mirror's own configuration some may be carved mirror some may be broken mirror some may be uneven mirror so all these kind of things will create that image and that if you look at the if one looks at the image it becomes the the distorted form of that version of of that that object that you will get similar way our reality works our reality is not the ultimate reality because it depends upon our own mental state our own conditioning our own thought pattern our own memory or it triggers some kind of emotion all these are involved into there so in that that determines what is the kind of thing we'll experience so this is true for all aspects of the life whatever life is bringing that is it is as it is but a way we interpret it that determines our experience of life that's why i have given some some example there you know about the flower example it will be different for different people because it is not the ultimate reality in that says sense it is like a relative reality our in between our own mind projection has come and that is interpreting the whole thing so now let us talk about the the external reality and internal reality okay how we experience there are some experiences are governed by the external factors which is not in our control 
So in our practical life, something can happen, some incident can happen. You know, say there may be uh, suddenly a storm can come or, uh, you know, maybe some share market crash happened. Some other, anything can happen in the outside, some COVID, uh, you know, pandemic can happen and all this kind of, these are external events. But whatever be the external events, we just respond to that in a, in a very different way. It is, it is based on our own mental makeup, our own thinking, our own approach towards life. We will experience this same event in a different, different way. Why it is different? Because our inner configurations are different. So that is, we call it an inner reality. So outer reality is something which is beyond your control. And there is some inner reality which interprets it that gives your experience. So whatever you call as life, that is, that is a reflection of your inner experiences. That, 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 is, that is the truth. You just think about it. Whatever you face, it is your version of life, correct? So that is it not necessarily that is the ultimate truth. We, from childhood onwards, you experience life as per your versions of things, as per your choices you make. You have a free will. You have an interpretation. You have the things, some action you choose to take, not to take. Some you, you think this way or that way. Hmm. Or you have to, you know, talk about it, not to talk about it, talk about it positively, talk about it negatively, talk about it, you know, uh, differently. All these are contributing to the experience of life. So in that sense, there is one ultimate reality, which is created by the creator, creator of the universe, just like I was giving example of the flower, moon, and so on and so forth. There is another reality you create for your own, based on your, all your experiences, inner, your inner configuration, that becomes your inner reality. So I started with that. So to have the direct experience of the truth, you have to drop all your inner interpretation machinery so that you can, not you, that experience is happening by itself. Awareness is aware of itself. You go to that stage where there's no interpreter. But below that, all are your own interpretations of the things and that determines the how you, you feel the love of life is. And no matter what action you take or don't take, etc., all these are coming, contributing to that your experience of your own life. So in that sense, your inner reality determines your experience of life. Because all it is within your habit pattern, your mental projections, your, your thoughts and your emotions, your state of mind, your past experiences, all are within you. So that means if you approach it logically, it is possible if you change your inner state, your experience of life will also change. Like if rather than a carved mirror, you, if you can achieve a clean, plain mirror, the reflection will change. And this is the key to live a life. to change our inner conditioning, inner state, so that our experience changes. In earlier laws, we have learned how our mind is powerful. You know, it can manifest things. If you hold one particular thought for 65 seconds, it gets manifested. But at the same time, we don't count the unconscious background music is played all the time. And mostly those are negative. 
apprehensions, fears, and uh, our concerns, doubts, all these kind of things are there. They come and contaminate whatever you're trying to think of. You don't know. Honestly, you, you are not, you don't think it is happening, but because of that, your thought gets contaminated, it gets weakened, and that is a main reason of manifestation is not taking place. Whatever, whatever you are looking for, whatever you intended to. Also, there is a, another approach. Many people they taught that, uh, okay, it's called positive reinforcement. You know, just let us put positive. You know, take positive part of life. You know. And then, uh, um, so talk positive and only appreciate positive things. And nothing wrong in that. That's fine. But, but in this, you are still operating in the duality. If you take positive, then negative it should come along with it. It's a part of the same coin. What here we're trying to do, there is a many method, many, many people talk about positive thinking, positive reinforcement, positivity and blah, blah. Nothing wrong in that. Yeah. Only thing is here you have been using some technique to take the positivity and reject the negativity. This is not possible in because we are living in duality. So if you, if you pick up a coin with a head in the front, tail will come along with it. You cannot take only head and reject the tail. It's a part of the same coin. So when many people try that, they try, try to take all those things. And when they say that tail is also coming with it, they, get, they don't know what to do with it and got fed up. If you pick up only happiness, unhappiness will also come with it. <clears throat> Some phase, you know, it, it is a cycle, it will come. You cannot experience only the day and the night. you say that the night will not come. It, it does not happen. If the day has come, night has to come as well. So in this, in this case, all this kind of duality, we are trying to pick up one side of it and rejecting other side that it is not possible. It is your idea that I, I will get away with only the positive things in this and uh, and then we, that will make my life happy. Okay, all happy things, but it didn't happen. So then we get frustrated. It doesn't happen because you cannot have the solution in the same level where the things are being played out. Living in the duality, only half experiencing half of the duality is not possible. Like I give the example of taking a bar magnet, North, North Pole and South Pole. I try to break, take the only North Pole. How, no matter how many times I break the magnet, South Pole will come along with it. It will be created. We cannot get rid of the South Pole. But it is possible if, if you pursue that path, you want it to, because you don't want unhappiness. You don't want that is a flip side of the things as per our interpretation. It's not a flip side. It is a both sides of the same coin. Hmm. Then this self-realization, it comes that to get rid of the negative things in life, you have to drop both. You have to drop the polarity itself. Then you will go beyond polarity. There it is a unique a state of unity, that same state, unanimity, that is possible. But you have to drop both, happy and things as well. In this, so what happens is like I'm giving a magnet, if you hammer the bar magnet, one point of time it is lose its magnetism. It will become a just a mild steel again back. It become iron. That state, there is no polarity. You know, you wanted to get rid of south, but only south is not possible. You have to drop both the polarities, north and south. It becomes a pure state. It becomes a unanimity state. 
That's that way you can get rid of that. That way you can get rid of this, uh, both the, any of this polarity, both the polarity, you come to a state where this doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. And that is the pure state. If you reach that state, it is a very, very powerful state. You know, basically what you are doing is you are doing your inner engineering. You achieve the state where we are dropping the judgment only. You are just dropping the judgment. You are, whatever it comes, you just experience it as it is. And you do that in every moment. If you just accept as it is, experience as it is in the present moment, that already takes care of all these kinds of versions and interpretations and all these kinds of things. That aspect, that living in a moment by moment without any judgment yeah, and with when a mind thing has been removed, completely silenced, full control over the mind, that is enlightened living. No matter what comes, okay, we just take it as a another aspect of the creator and that's it. No analysis. There's no comparison. There's no something called good or bad or this and that. No need. It's all part of the experience and you, you live your life as something like not get fully bogged down into it and interpretation of it and feeling, you know, either you equanimity means neither you external things can make you greatly happy or greatly sad. Yeah, the experiences, okay. Like, like uh, traveling on the road, there may be some road ups and downs in the road and it will, you will consider it is a journey and ups and downs are part of it. If you're facing health issues, you say, okay, it's a physical body. It's a part of the nature. It's a, sometimes it is doing like well and sometimes not well. You have to take care and that is a resting period and then move on. No judgment. Why me? Why I'm facing this? Why I'm sick? No, part of the game. Same here. Yeah, yeah, yesterday I had huge amount of money. I was to stay in a seven-story building. So now I don't have any money. I'm, I'm staying in a mud hut. Both are same. I'm still staying and living, experiencing different aspects of it. That is good. That is bad. It is a, just an interpretation. Same thing. So we are experiencing life as it is. It comes without neither glamorizing nor demonizing. That is gone. You are not a winner. You are not a victim. And that is that is the truth. You are simply walking the path of your soul's plan. You are experiencing different things because at soul level, soul level is having a free will at the design stage. You designed it, this life. And now it is being played out. In the middle of the play, you cannot run away from the stage. A drama will be played out because you already agreed with a lot of character contracts are signed and now it will be played. Soul contracts are there and that is what is being played here. And that's what you are going towards. In between, you cannot change the rule of the game. <laughs> if you have to change the rule of the game, you have to again go to the soul level where it was created. So that is our state of you know, realizing things. So what would be the, what would be the best approach uh, to live the life? We, we say go with the flow because the flow what is coming to you, it is decided by you at the soul level. It is not something accidentally happening. So what you do, you enjoy the flow. Well, you know, just experience and enjoy. Don't get attached to anything. If you do that, you appreciate whatever. If something pleasant thing happens, you appreciate. If non-pleasant thing happens, you say, okay, fine. That I'm also okay with it. You come to a level which is called infinite patience. You know, you are not 
running, we had gratification. Many of the problems in our life created, we only created because we want instant gratification. Everything is instant right now. I need it now, or kind of stuff. This created our issues. There is a big you know, market forces and all they are, they are feeding you into those things for some different reason. No? This now business and uh, this now is not the now moment I'm talking. Hmm. They're impatient. Hmm. You want something, something you need now. If I'm hungry, my food has to reach within half an hour. You know, other will fire the pizza guy. This kind of stuff. Huh? So it has become a cultural uh, thing. Anyway, so what we lost is we come to a state where if I get this is fine. If I don't get it, this is also fine. There is not something we practiced. This is a big ego thing. Uh, and I'm just telling you, we, we, I, I just personally also practiced it at the time of you know sadhana. Uh, that when I was realizing how to get rid of these things, I should get personal preferences. And one of the big thing I, I tell again and again, I hit my ego saying, how does it matter? Okay. You came back from office, you expecting somebody will give you tea, you didn't get the tea, you get angry. Then rather than getting angry, you ask yourself, how does it matter if I don't drink tea one day? Okay. How does it matter? Okay. Or if you wanted to go somewhere because of something that is getting delayed, is it fine? If I go, if I went yesterday, that is also fine. If you could have gone today, it's also fine. We'll do it tomorrow. That is also fine. Okay. When we do jobs and, uh, you know, if we put some kind of plan or something and somebody else comes and spoils it, so we got angry. So, and most of the things, if we are egoistic, it, it, it is we enforce that. It's my way or highway. In that also, you accept that one job can be done in 10 different ways, not necessarily the one it clicked in my mind. That is the truth. Earlier stages in my professional life, I was also surprised many times. Suppose something is happening, some tender, we need to construct something or some tendering, some strategy or whatever. So my organization company didn't follow the strategy. I recommended they're going through something else. Then I thought it would be disaster. Soon they will realize and come back to me saying that, okay, Rajdeep, whatever you are saying, that is correct. To my surprise, after a few months, I realized that other method equally worked even better than mine whatever proposed. No such mess have happened. Nobody is punished what I was thinking that they will realize and things like that. Nothing happened. It, it went well and uh, you know, finally it did manifest it. So that is my learning point that it is not necessary that what I, what I am, my view, that is the only way. And I give that, that from there the realization came that a mountain can be climbed in hundreds of different ways, not necessarily the path I follow. If we respect that, then all our journeys are independent journeys. And that's fine. My experience of climbing a mountain will be based on my inner realizations. And same as I have to respect somebody else's realization also. Maybe a different path, it's fine. Ramakrishna Paramahansa said, Chotamot, Totapot. Yeah, those many opinions, that many ways, rather than fighting whose opinion is better. The, whose opinion is better coming from the duality? So, to, means it to somebody to win, somebody has to lose. But if you that, that perspective, you know, the ultimate reality is just a different path. It is neither higher nor lower. So as our, our own journey, our own journey, our own life experiences, it is a spiritual path, actually. We are following our soul's path, soul's plan. From our journey point of view, soul's point of view, 
nobody is higher than anyone nobody is lower than anyone and nobody is equal to anyone also and this understanding is possible because higher lower equal and all this kind of stuff this comes from the comparison the duality so what is the non duality aspect of it simply you understand that each everyone walking the unique path that's why it cannot be compared each of us getting a custom made question paper in the exam that's why it cannot be compared neither you can copy nor you can do the you know same thing for that your question paper is completely unique you have to address it yourself you have to performance also as per your own question paper you have to answer it doesn't matter somebody is become higher lower and how many they got doesn't matter so that is that that is the approach of your inner reality is having your external external reality and how you perceive into your reality making your experiences so in that sense from that this law says you create your reality this reality what is talking about as i explained earlier it is not talking about the ultimate reality it is talking about your inner reality which is governed by your experiences so in this what we are the uh, we take away from this things that it two level at the soul level we create our reality we we plan our life so it is truth in that level and when it played out life is playing out then we experience our life how good we are aligned with our soul's plan or not aligned with our soul's plan if you don't not aligned with our soul's plan we face lot of obstacles lot of obstacles lot of difficulty because that is not the path universe is telling you this is not the way that way may be wonderful looks good but that is not your way this is not what you came to experience you know somebody in you at the soul level you choose what to take when to take but who will be your parents what will be your country what will be your language what is your intelligence level what kind of relationships you will have what kind of you know financial status you have what kind of education you can have which is the area of your work all are pre decided and somebody was asking me if we have to decide our parents and everything so why we didn't select tatas and birlas and you know ambanis and other you know rich families to be born with if we have the choice the answer to that is this richness and poorness also duality it's completely different when you look at it from the soul point of view it needs some experience and not all experience is possible there whatever experience you choose to undergo that is not possible if you born with a silver spoon that spoon will be taken out on the time of death anyway it is not really contribute to your growth of your experience and whatever now let me come to that level how how it is played out what could be the best strategy to live a life first i told it should be about the living in the present moment then if you can connect with your higher self or inner guru take guidance that is the best possible outcome okay but otherwise if you don't have that connection learn from the experiences it some aside you say too much of resistance don't try to push that that may not be for you go with whatever the situation even comes give your best and flow with that with a clear acceptance something you don't like you accept it and then move on when you go that automatically as per your plan the things will come in front of you and you do your best you there are some of the things are karmic and those karmic things will also come best way is not to run away from it face it you finish it off finish the account and 
after you do this a certain time will come if you do enough of this you do your your swadharma or this you karma if you go it is called karma yoga that part when you come to a level when you are doing your duty and all these kind of things divine help will come it is fact that all the karma you have in your past lives in one life it is impossible to go whatever you do you take then the divine intervention happens they take away in the balance of karma they will send agents they will will meet somebody in your life they have a capacity to burn your karma karma shalan will happen sometimes state by state in the different layer different things comes out if you have not enough of that karma good karma or prepare yourself you will not meet anybody in your life of that kind of people and to some extent maybe that person will come to your doorstep you will not allow that person to come in you know you will tell i don't believe it or something like that you will not able to receive it you know that is also true it will happen so just uh, something which reminded me uh, somebody was asking me this karma kshalan then deleting karma and all this kind of stuff they are asking me uh, during karma kshalan of my good karma bad karma both will go <laughs> so means they wanted to keep good karma and rid bad karma right? we understand that but the in higher level it doesn't do like that is karma is ultimately karma that was i was explaining earlier hmm. don't be in the gain attachment to duality everything will go you will become a clean you will see the open sky it is everything you don't again stick to that so called good karmas okay because if you come to a something level it 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 needs to be removed completely so that you go out of that influence of karma that is more important then in the wish of holding the good and just living the bad again you are going to the trap of picking up the head leaving the tail taking the north pole leaving the south pole that mind which is telling you to become smart huh? divine has sent me some guru who can delete the karma i will tell him delete the bad one i need the good one leave it for me <laughs> so <laughs> they become smart no they try to manipulate the divine also surrender that is the best way your soul knows your inner guru knows everything what is good for you if something is good for you it will come but you may have to give away with the small small things small good things to allow the bigger things to come the infinite power to enter to create that you need to undergo certain kind of purification you know see all our purification what we do we do some havan or fire and all those things so fire initially what it does it destroys things it clean the area and then from that you raise the new thing so your new life or the transformation of life will come from the ashes of your old ones unless until old ones are burned new thing will not come it is like undergoing a surgery undergoing a knife of a surgeon it is painful surgery need to be made maybe some tumor happened or something but that has to under, you have to undergo the knife to get out of these things so that uh, you can live a new life same here so that time you don't pick and choose uh, that okay why why to knife and uh, uh, is there anything any other method like you put some kind of bomb and it will go and that is your idea huh? that necessary thing is cut it remove it and finish it so don't be you know stuck with the small small things aim for a very big infinite if there you have the potential you have the instrument everything is there only thing you should be pursuing that goal rather than stuck into small small things so in that if we live like like this then only we see what is in the ground and what is there and all but we never been able to look up so just look up ignore the one which is below small small things it's okay keep moving 
But if your aim is high, through your own higher self, the soul consciousness, you get connected to the universal consciousness. And you enter a field of a miraculous zone. Or in the in through meditation, we enter into a field called Tathastu field. Tathastu means whatever you intend, it gets manifested. Go into that. This is the way to transform your life and whatever it comes out of the process is just your complete life transformation of your experiences. And that's what we call life. But our own experiences. So if your own experience changes and it is aligned with the universal consciousness, aligned with your soul's plan, it will be a fantastic thing to live the rest of your life with that. And that is enlightened living. That is a life of liberation, life of pure bliss. And that is highest level possible of experiencing a life. The body will go, but that experience will remain. Experience will happen if you keep on complaining every stage of life. Life will end someday, but you will, you will at the end of the life, your life journey will be a bunch of frustrations and complaints and things like that. Or at a certain point of time, you take a lip jump and you fly. You know, then what is in the ground doesn't matter. You are flying. And that will be your experience of life. And that my kind of experience, when you go there, touch that area, then your you know, heart chakra opens, you operate through pure love and compassion. Whatever you touch is that get transformed as well. You know? And that gives these experiences back of your own life. And that that is the way to you create your own reality. So that becomes your reality. Everything is loving. We can see everything, perfectness of the creation. Everywhere, everything you experience, you feel that it is a blessings from the divine. You feel the blessings and you live in the attitude of gratitude. And that is how wonderfully that you play your life. All is possible through your, through your inner connection. Nothing needs to be changed outside to do that. There is no need, rather. It's your life. It's for a temporary period. You are a visitor in this plane. So we are all spiritual beings having human experience. Not the other way around. Not we are human beings wanted to be spiritual. No. <laughs> we are already there. We have to go to our own original state from where we are all created. Human being and created out of pure love, Prema Sarupa, if we can go to that, operate from that pure love, everything else automatically will change because we are connecting with the power source. And that source, when we get connected and remain connected every moment, that transforms everything. And that becomes our reality of life. All right. So with this, I will close this uh, learning session. So if you have any question, so please bring it forward.